Hey guys, it's Shaylin. I'm here today with another writing video. Today I'm going to be talking about dealing with criticism on your writing, but also how to apply feedback effectively, not just how to deal with it from like an ego <laughs> or emotional perspective, but also how to actually like effectively implement feedback that you get and make the most of it. Before I continue, I do just want to say that I'm sorry for any background noise in this video. It's begin it's becoming really difficult to find times to film because the of the amount of yard work um, and construction going on outside my house. There is a little bit happening right now, but I hope it's not too annoying. Um, it's just like someone using a rake, so I figured that that was better than like a saw. Um, oh, I first of all wanted to start out by saying that I think that more than anything, this is a matter of practice, kind of like anything in writing. Taking feedback can be really difficult at first. I was really bad at it at first, and I'm only good at it because I've done it a ton of times. I'm not really naturally a thick-skinned person, but I don't really think taking feedback well is about having naturally thick skin. It's Oh, it's about a lot of things, but for one, it's partly about just doing it a few times and getting some experience with it. When you've never really gotten much feedback on your work, it can be hard to separate feedback on this piece of writing and my worth as a writer or even my worth as a person. But with a little bit of experience, you kind of get used to that. So I fully understand how it can be scary to get feedback on your work for the first time. It does get easier because once you've done it, you realize it doesn't really have the weight on your value as a human that you might have thought that it did before. With a bit of practice, you develop more healthy mindsets on how to take feedback, um, but if it helps, here are some things that you can kind of remind yourself of if you feel like this is going to be pretty difficult for you. So the first thing to remember is this is about my work not about me as a person. This is about this draft of this piece of work. Doesn't mean that a future draft can't be fantastic. This is about one draft of one piece of work, not my overall capabilities as a writer. I sought out this feedback because I wanted to improve both as a writer and this piece. Every single writer that I admire has received criticism on their work. This doesn't affect my value or capability as a writer. Getting feedback on my work means that I was brave enough to seek it, not that I am a bad writer. Those are some things that you can keep in mind, some little mantras, if they help. Um, again, it really is more a matter of practice, but these are some good things to keep in mind. So all that said, I'm going to go into some different tips and some different points um, to help you make the most of feedback on your writing. So my first tip is to get feedback from people that you trust. I could get into my hashtag T on beta reading and why I don't think it's that efficient or effective, but it's really important to get feedback from people that you trust um, and whose opinions you value. And I do think, especially if you're new to getting feedback, it's really important that you get feedback in a way that feels safe for you. If going in you feel like this isn't an environment where your work is respected or even where like you're respected as a person, it's probably gonna end with either you feeling terrible about your work or yourself or with you just rejecting all the feedback because you'd already decided it wasn't valuable to you beforehand. You need to respect the people critiquing you and you need to feel respected by them and um, as much as I think I'm pretty good at taking feedback, to be honest, I think for the most part it's because I just know how to put myself in good critiquing situations and have learned what critiquing situations aren't healthy for me. And that's totally fine. If a certain critiquing method or situation isn't healthy for you, there are other alternatives. There are lots of ways to get feedback on your work. Um, and you should do one that is beneficial for you, both in terms of giving you valuable notes and also like emotionally as a person. There have only been like a handful of times where I've actually felt dejected by feedback on my work. Um, in the many, many times I've gotten critique on my work. Really only a handful of times. All of those cases were just cases where I didn't feel like the person giving me the critique respected me as a person or as a writer. So if you know going in that it's going to be a situation like this, it's probably not going to end well. I think it's really important to foster good critique in relationships with people who you trust and who you see eye to eye with. But maybe for you, like getting feedback from people you know stings more and you'd rather get feedback from strangers. That's totally cool. It is about what is a safe environment for you. I did two beta reading rounds when I was younger. I felt pretty crappy after one of them. It's not just because the feedback was 
overwhelmingly bad. It wasn't. It was mixed. Several betas who I don't think really respected me very much and so I felt pretty crappy and I hadn't had much experience getting my work critiqued at that point and so I felt pretty bad about it and I thought that I was just super sensitive and unable to deal with feedback. I thought it was just my fault and I was a big baby. A few months later I was going into my first ever writing workshop for school and I was terrified. I literally was worried that I would like start crying during the workshop. And then I go into my first workshop, it's totally fine. I left feeling more excited about the piece than when I went in. Despite the abundance of criticism, I didn't even get a good grade on the story. There was a lot of critical feedback as you'd expect and it was fine. I felt great. I felt motivated. I felt inspired and the difference is just that in that environment I felt respected as a writer and I felt that the critique given was respectful of my work and was genuinely trying to help me, genuinely trying to help me. So I think it's really important to find a critiquing situation that works for you because I do think the environment can make a really big difference and if you feel like you're unable to take feedback or bad at taking feedback it might just be because you haven't found yourself in the right situation um, that works for you. Anyways, I won't get into this huge hot take because it is a hot take, but beta reading is not the only way to get feedback and I don't think it's a mandatory way to get feedback on a manuscript. There are a lot of different ways to get feedback on a manuscript, so find the one that works for you. I'm just jumping in with a quick little extra bit that I forgot to film. This is going to be podcast style just because um, it's night out right now and dark and so it would look bad and also... I'm deep conditioning my hair at the moment, so it's not exactly a look. This is actually just like a little personal anecdote, and it's actually the most tea-licious part of the video, so kind of sacrilegious that I forgot it initially, but I wanted to tell this little story because I think it's a really important part to point to make that you don't have to tolerate rudeness on your work. I used to feel like when I would get edits that there were a few times, very minimal to be clear, like I haven't had a lot of experiences getting really rude feedback, a handful of times, but when I had beta readers, I had a handful of instances where I got feedback that was quite rude and um, I felt like I was a bad writer and I didn't know how to take feedback and I was too sensitive and if, if it upset me, you know, like this was a flaw of myself as a writer, not just like you're too sensitive as a person, but you were a bad writer who can't take feedback. That's how I felt about myself when I would um, get these really rude comments when in reality, if someone is being rude to you, is being mean to you, you do not have to tolerate that. The person also kind of completely invalidates their credibility. They just seem like a rude person who gets mad about everything rather than someone who's here to help. This is very full of tea because it's about real people that I went to university with. <laughs> so when I was in my fourth year of university, I was taking this class and um, it was a lecture style course, but in the course we broke off into little workshop groups like three or four times in the semester. And I had had a ton of workshop experience at this point. I was really comfortable in a workshop setting and I'd workshop with like dozens of different people and I'd never had a problem. Never had an issue with anyone I'd workshopped with. Never felt personally attacked, never felt upset. Like it was super chill. And there was this one person in my group who as the semester went on, her edits to me became just progressively ruder and ruder. Even in workshops, she'd be quite rude in the workshop setting. And then for our last workshop, it was like the first 20 pages of a novel. I got these edits back and I was just like, oh my God, like these are really quite mean. They were just line edits. We weren't supposed to do written comments. They were so mean. This was like a, over a year ago, so I don't remember them off the top of my head. But one of them that I remember was, I don't even think you know what this word means. And like she was writing like this is painfully unnecessary and like underlining the word painfully and like writing in all caps and that kind of stuff was on every page. So I was like really taken aback. I showed a bunch of my friends and I was like, I don't know what to make of this or like what I should do. And every single per one of my friends was like, you should show them to the prof, duh. And I was like, oh, but I don't want to, like, I don't want to be a narc. And everyone was like, be a narc, like, please be a narc, like, this is really out of line. The reason I ended up actually showing the prof was because, because they were mini workshops, they were kind of unsupervised and they were just line edits. And so our workshop participation grade was based on a self-assessment. She was a sessional prof, so, um, who only taught this one class. So I didn't really have a relationship with her in the department. So I emailed her and I was like, hey, like, I'm a student in your class and, um, I got some line edits on my piece that 
I think are maybe crossing a line and um, maybe you'd want to take a look at them. My professor emailed back and this professor, let me tell you, she wanted the tea. So I go into her office hours and like she agreed with me that these line edits were not okay and also was like, yeah, like this is a perfect example of like, you could have phrased this really nicely and instead you were really rude. Like on the one where she'd said like, do you even know, I don't even think you know what this word means. That could have been phrased, not sure this makes sense, question mark. And it didn't have to be like so condescending. I'd worked up with a lot of people and never had an issue. So I, I feel like I have a sense for when something's crossing a line. But then the most, literally this was the most validating thing that's ever happened to me in my life. The professor goes, do you mind if I photocopy this and give it to the head of the department so we can use this to make a document to give every student in every writing class as an example of what not to do in workshop. You know, I had a lot of experience getting critique at that point. Those edits made me feel like crap, you know? Those edits, they were some of the rudest edits I've ever gotten. I felt like crap, you know? There were like two days after getting those edits where, you know, I felt awful. It's okay to be upset, um, even though I know that it's not a reflection of my value as a writer and I know that those comments were out of line, they still did hurt, you know? It's something that I had worked hard on to write and someone was really rude to it. So my next tip, this is gonna seem super blunt, just don't take feedback you don't agree with and stop there. Like you don't have to justify it, you don't have to argue about it, like just don't. It's totally cool. Um, all feedback is a suggestion and there's no reason to feel that the person critiquing you is 100% right and you're a crappy writer, therefore everything they say is coming from a place of knowing better than, just as there's no reason to say that because it's your work, you don't need feedback or you know the best all the time. Everyone is human. Everyone's just gonna give their piece, their opinion, including you as the writer. If you get a piece of feedback you don't agree with, it, like, stop there don't apply it. I used to feel like I had to take every edit that I got. I used to feel like I was a bad writer if I didn't take every edit because I didn't trust myself to know better. Like I figured if someone gave me a note, they must know better than me because I'm the writer and I'm blinded by like my vision or whatever. No. <laughs> it was really overwhelming to feel like I had to take every note and also impossible. Like, especially if you're getting notes from multiple people, they're gonna say conflicting things. You just can't do it. That's fine. Take feedback that resonates with you. Don't take feedback that doesn't that simple. If you feel like none of the feedback resonates with you, then you need to examine if you respect the people that you're getting critiques from or if you're getting critiques in the right way or if maybe there's some kind of barrier that you've built up of why you don't want to receive feedback. Like if, if you really get feedback from say 10 people and you're like none of this resonates with me, maybe consider the method you're getting feedback how you feel about it and if you're really ready to get feedback. But in general, um, if you're approaching this with a relatively healthy and balanced mindset, you should be able to just be like, that resonates with me and what I want from the story. I'm gonna go with it. This is fine, nothing wrong with this note, but it just doesn't resonate with what I wanna do. So I'm not gonna take it. I think it's important to remember that in the end, this is your story and you shouldn't change anything that would make you fundamentally less happy with the piece. There's this weird like marketing business, reader first, author barely matters mindset that you have to please the crowd before staying true to what you want. I don't agree and I don't write that way. I just would not be happy if I changed something that I didn't wanna change because I was told to in an edit and then it just made me less happy with the story. And when it was published, I wouldn't be able to look at it with like total pride of what I'd created because it wasn't what I wanted it to be. I don't work like that and I don't know why, but I see it said a lot that like as writers, we don't know what's best for our work. Most of the time we do. Um, if you've worked hard on self-awareness, like you, you do know what's best for your work because you know what you want it to be. That doesn't mean that your first draft is perfect and it doesn't mean you shouldn't get feedback because you should get feedback. But it also means that if someone says, hey, I don't like this character, delete them and you like this character, you don't have to delete them or change them if that's gonna make you unhappy with the book. Like it's important 
to write the story how you want it to be and take the feedback that enhances that. I think it's really important to remember this, that you don't have to take every note, you don't have to take all feedback, because if you go in without understanding this, you probably won't be open to any feedback at all. When you feel like you have to take all notes, suddenly the weight of every single critique you get is so much because it feels like a, a demand and like a necessary thing you have to do. And so you're probably gonna close yourself off from the beginning to get any feedback. You're gonna be defensive, you're gonna justify why all of the notes aren't applicable because it's too scary to even consider that they might be right. But if you go in knowing that you can just take that, reject that, take this, reject that, based on what vibes with you, you're gonna be in a way healthier place to actually accept the feedback that will help you. I think it's also really important to remember when looking at people's feedback that sometimes the, the, the notes people will give aren't actually the underlying issue. A lot of the time people will comment on issue A, B, C, D, and it's actually issue like X. Because they're seeing the story from a different angle, they can't see issue X. We're seeing the story from this angle straight on, they're seeing it from like this angle. Maybe issue X, they can't see it, but it's the cause of all the problems. Does that make sense? So when you get a note, it's really important that you don't just think about the issues that people have, but think about why they may have had those issues. Oftentimes the underlying problem is only visible to you, and people are gonna notice the symptoms of the issue, which they'll pick up to be different issues, but really it's coming back to this one root thing. I've just, I've seen this happen multiple times, I think it's fairly common. So before you just change a bunch of things because people told you to, try to think about why they reached that conclusion with the information you provided them in your story. I will say, in my experience, by the time you're a fairly competent writer, so you understand characterization and structure and line editing to a fairly competent level, I would say that 90% of edits come down to clarity, so things not being clear to the reader or not making sense. Even if the readers don't note it as a clarity issue, it's probably a clarity issue. I've also kind of realized with time that probably 80% of edits can be fixed with one to two sentences of context, and that seems almost like impossible, but I used to feel like I had to take the most drastic option to implement edit. When I would get notes, I felt like in order to make the story good, that meant changing it a lot. Like the story had to change a lot to be good. Because so many edits come down to clarity, even if they don't look like clarity edits initially, so many things can be fixed with literally a sentence or two of context or clarity in the piece. I would actually say that my work has become a lot better when I've learned that you don't have to change everything, you don't have to reshuffle all the pieces and change the point of view and add six characters in order to fix this note. You don't have to take the most dra dramatic option. See if you can fix it with like one short paragraph of context because a lot of the time you can and trust me, my life got a lot easier when I realized that. I think this is also really important if you have a tendency to discard feedback because you think the reader just didn't get it. If someone didn't didn't get something and you're like, oh, well, they didn't get it, therefore uh, this feedback's not relevant. Ask yourself why they didn't get it and what the underlying clarity issue that, again, you could probably fix with one sentence is that's causing that. I guess like what I'm saying in the end is people will see the symptoms, only you can see the disease. Sometimes it's like in a cartoon, you know, where there's like an angry buffalo and he's untamable, and then the little kid realizes that it's just because he has a thorn in his foot, pulls out the thorn and suddenly the beast is tamed. Sometimes it's a case like that. As the writer, maybe only you can see the thorn and everyone critiquing you will only see the temperamental bull with anger issues. Um, again, I'm not saying that all critiques can be fixed so easily. Sometimes you do need an overall, sometimes it is a large issue, but I think that it really helps to know going in that a lot of things can be fixed with less effort than they might seem, and you can make your writing a lot better without overhauling the entire thing if that's something you're worried about. So be open to big changes, but before you feel like you have to make big changes, you might be able to just tinker with it a little bit and fix a lot. So my last tip is to practice critiquing others. When you critique others from a respectful place, you'll know how to take critique respectfully. So when you have had the experience critiquing someone's work and you know that when you critique someone, you're just trying to help them make the work 
the best it can be. You're not judging them as a person. You're not judging them as a writer. You're not thinking about how good they are. You're literally just reading this, getting excited about the piece and trying to help the author make it the best it can be. When you've had the experience doing that for someone else, you can give them that same benefit of the doubt. But if you haven't had that experience, you've only gotten critique, it can be hard to see yourself from the critiquer's point of view and understand that they probably don't have any ill will, they're probably not judging you, they literally are just trying to help. If you don't have that experience or if when you critique others you are judgmental of them and you are critiquing from a disrespectful place, you're probably gonna feel like everyone is seeing you from that same perspective and it's gonna be hard to take feedback on your work. So if when you critique others you feel like you're not respectful, either in how you present your feedback or just in your mindset and you feel like you do judge them, try to dismantle that and it'll really help you in your own experience getting critiques. I used to have really bad phone anxiety. A really common thing among introverts, um, I would like cry when I had to make phone calls. Um, I hated making phone calls. I would just go so out of my way to avoid making phone calls. And then one summer I had a job, I was like working in tourism and doing a lot of bookings over the phone. So I would spend hours a day answering the phone. As soon as I got that job, it basically kind of got rid of my phone anxiety because I was never annoyed with people when they called. It's literally my job to take their calls. So I know, like, why would I be annoyed if they didn't really have all of the knowledge and had to ask questions? I didn't think they were dumb or anything. I just would answer the questions. That's my job. Like, I know about this. That's why I work here. And so it gave me that same context for when I was phoning. Now when I would call to make an appointment, I didn't think, oh, they're going to be so annoyed at me for taking up their time and wasting their time and they don't want to deal with me and I must be seem so dumb. Like, I... I know that that's not the case because I've had that job and I never felt that way about someone calling me. Um, I would only get annoyed when someone was being rude and I know that I'm not being rude on the phone, so it's fine. Um, it's really the same thing with getting critique. So if you really do struggle to take critique, my biggest recommendation would be to work on how you give critiques to other people and get practice doing that. It can really, really help with your mindset and also it'll just make you a better writer. Giving critiques to other writers is one of the best ways to become a better writer yourself and um, maybe even more so than getting critiques on your own writing. So those are my tips on how to implement feedback into your work. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions you can always send me an ask on Tumblr and I'll see you in another video.